What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Would You Watch It Again? The show where we review your movies, anime, and TV shows. At the end, answer the only question that really matters. Would you watch this over again? I'm your host, D, and today I got the homie Roy with me, and we're reviewing 2019's Joker. Let's talk about it. All right, so Joker is a story about, it's a standalone story about the origins of the character Joker, who in this movie is named Arthur Flick. Um, it deals more so of like a person with mental mental illness turning into insanity and that's the movie um <laughs> Roy, what do you think of the story uh story was very interesting uh to you like what you just said it's like if mental health was a movie you know this is it you know what i'm saying they literally pretty much show you all the ways you know arthur could not turn into the joker but you know instead we get the scenario in which he does turn into the Joker. And that's through like him damn near having a psychotic breakdown. Um, and then just acting on his impulses from there on out or acting on impulses and bad advice that he gets, you know, like True. his, his friendly neighborhood clown friend who hands him a gun and tells him, Oh yeah, you just need a gun to handle those kids. So the next time he gets in trouble, <laughs> he starts shooting shit up, you know? <laughs> so, so i so i'm oh, sorry did i interrupt you go ahead no we can just cut oh. that okay um so the story i think is really good but i don't think this movie would have done as good as it did if it didn't have the tagline joker because i was talking to uzi about this he was like this could have been named like mental illness the movie and you wouldn't have known the difference but because it has the tagline joker is getting a lot more praise and i don't know how i feel about just like a standalone joker movie i thought it was a bad movie like the story's not bad at all right but it's still like the joker i want batman in it as well batman's in the movie but like he's a kid but like what like where does that lead us in like this batman versus we just see an adult joker and a kid batman yeah i mean to be honest for me i i appreciated the th story and i think that comes from me like enjoying indie films when I was a little younger. So, I mean, this really does have like an indie vibe to it, but just with a big budget, you know? So that's kind of how I originally thought of the movie, you know, three years ago when it came out. And <laughs> indie film? when I, when I, yeah, when I originally saw it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, yeah, it's like, just like a super, super budget indie film. Um, and that's why you can like reflect on ment mental illness and, you know, show us like the effects of when that's not cared for and, you know, it just happens to be a, you know, a super villain that comes from it. So do you think this movie needed to be two hours long? Because the entire time I'm watching this movie, I'm just waiting for the breakdown. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of like for like an hour and a half, it's build up. And the last 30 minutes is literally, it all like falls down. So I think they can accomplish this with just and like an hour of build up. If that makes sense, or maybe like forty-five minutes of build-up. Oh, you know what? Yeah, cut out the Zazie Beats shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I love Zazie Beats. Um, that was the most unrealistic part of the movie. <laughs> Ain't no way in hell, <laughs> my man is pulling Zazie Beats. No, that's no. But that's best part of it, though. It's like he's in his own head, so you don't know if it's mm. real or not. Like, no, that was, and I didn't even realize that until like. You know, towards the end, like you said, like towards the climax where this motherfucker's just sitting in her, you know, her living room and she's like, no, I don't, you know, she doesn't want him there. And I'm like, oh, wait, hold up. Has this all been in this head this whole time? Like, I don't exactly know, but at the same point, like, I mean, this man was going on dates with her, like, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> in his head, <laughs> he, in his head, he took her on a date. She found out that he was stalking her and she was cool with it. Like. Like that, that right there, that that was probably like my least favorite part, to be honest, because I just didn't understand. Like, okay, is this happening? This isn't happening. If it wasn't happening, then where's the moment where she like fl flips out on him, which doesn't happen till the end when he's, you know, like I said, sitting in her living room. You know, what I'm saying when her kids sleep. Yeah, the I think one of the best parts, or yeah, one of the things I enjoy about like different shows that do this is like they leave, um some stuff up for interpretation for the for the audience like he's in there in her room and you don't know if he like killed her or did anything to her and then in the, in the movie 
you just see him walking out of his like oh he's in like the therapist's office and he's just fucking laughing it's like what's so funny and it's like the entire movie just happened maybe in his head or maybe it really happened and he's in like the therapist's like room for that reason and then at the end he's walking out and like these shoes are bloody so you don't know if he killed the person or not like it's literally all up into like for the audience to decide like whether he did it or did not so i like i like that about the story like i think that was done very well yeah and uh um yeah all the like leaving shit up for interpretation is cool um the this is like a mystery you know the idea of like who he is you know who his mom is how did they get like this and then is she lying or was thomas wayne lying you know did mm-hmm. he set her up like and i look like your ass was crazy to me but <laughs> you know who knows this could be bruce wayne's older brother you know it's long lost 30 year old 30 year old brother you know but son 30 year old son 30 year old son you know which is insane but at the same time you know thomas wayne rich as fuck so i'm assuming he could have him some you know <laughs> an eight-year-old when he's like 55 <laughs> you know if that makes sense um so when you think about like some of the characters like obviously joaquin phoenix like killed it as like mm-hmm. the joker he did like a fucking fantastic ass job he lost crazy amount of weight he looked like he was insane like he yeah. sold crazy and um not emotional and he sold like i pity like i, I pitied him until i didn't kind of and then i also kind of still pitied him at the end so i think he sold himself very well as a character and then uh, i'll guess no one else really matters honestly, yeah. <laughs> honestly i mean matter. yeah to that point like yeah because like at the end of the movie i don't leave hating walking phoenix or hating the joker you know yeah i i leave feeling like yeah this is kind of what you expect to happen yeah go i don't know if, i mean it was jarring as fuck seeing him this man just blowing people's brains out you know what i'm saying because it it's a you know a switch switch kind of flips in his head and he's and now he's just you know what i'm saying this maniacal person just out here killing people because you know y'all started stomping me out which by the way i mean that's self-defense but when you chase somebody down and make sure they ask dead like that's a little <laughs> bit different um like i said zazie beats you know she's beautiful but i don't really know what the point of her character was i'm sure somebody smarter than me could tell me um i liked uh what's old boy's name robert de niro oh yeah murray murray was great you know he was talking big shit and i like that um big shit so his ass got you know he got his <laughs> brains blown out um who else? I mean, like to your point, like everybody else is like really, really a side character. You know, they're yeah. all just to help lift up Joker, Walking Phoenix, Arthur Fleck, whatever you want to call him, just to like help, like you know, set up the story around this you know person and why he went insane like this. Um, yeah, the clowns are cool. You know, what I'm saying that clown, <laughs> the scene where um <laughs> where, where he kills the shit out of the um one dude the big clown oh, in his apartment yeah in his apartment but he lets oh, the, yeah. uh, the, the dwarf dwarf stay <laughs> alive <laughs> you can go you can go <laughs> kisses on the forehead like I, I like you though i was like uh see like it's, it's a good movie it's a good movie man um mm-hmm. um cinematography i think this shirt looks fucking amazing it's shot mm-hmm. like crazy well the stair scene whoever thought i wanted to see the joker dance down some steps that's a good ass scene um i don't really have much to say about anything else besides no. um would i watch this again yeah of course yeah um no. it's a good movie i don't think it needs the tagline joker to be a good movie though i think if it was like literally labeled anything else it would still be a good movie but people would kind of I guess push it towards the Joker because clown, but I think I'll watch this again. Yeah, Thank no, you. definitely watch it again. Um, yeah, to yeah, it doesn't need to be a um, like I said, it could be a standalone film. Doesn't need to be attached to any of these um, superhero universes. Uh, you know what it reminds me of when you said it like that? What? You remember those indie superhero movies that came out back in the day? Um, that one gem with Rain Wilson in it yeah like yeah. yeah i could see yeah that makes a lot of sense to me yeah i could definitely 
if you had just named this motherfucker anybody, you can give him any sort of name, and I would have believed you. And I'm like, oh, this is a great film. Um, into like the cinematography, the art, just the artistic view of the film in general. Like, um, yo, it must be easy as hell to like portray Gotham because everybody does it well. Like, it's so easy to just make shit look dark and gloomy as fuck. Um, they killed that. I like the '80s look. Um, and then as well as that with the dancing and all that shit, like the music. That's the main reason why I wanted to talk about this because like everyone's talking about the second one being a a musical. Um, a musical. But if you watch the whole time, this man's dancing the entire movie. Like he's always there's always some sort of song that's stuck in his head. Um, even when he's doing crazy ass shit. So yeah, definitely watch this again. Um, especially when before uh Joker two comes out, you know, fucking like two years or whatever. Yeah. So those are our thoughts and Last year, some of yours. Did you like the Joker movie? Did you think it didn't need to be labeled Joker? Do you want a second one? Do you want a musical? What do you think about Lady Gaga being cast as Harley Quinn? Do you hate it? Love it? Let us know down in the comments and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.